Elizabeth Sen how do you say your name? Senna. 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 Okay. You're a speech language pathologist with Lake County Educational Service Center. She provides related service in low incidence classrooms in the Willoughby East Lake School District. She works primarily with elementary students who have Asperger's or are on the spectrum. She's a graduate of Bowling Green State University, my alma mater, yay, and Akron University. Um, she has worked with children um, with a variety of speech, language, and low incidence disabilities for the past 10 years. She has presented on topics including assistive technology, visual supports, and strategies to enhance communication and team collaboration. Please Paul Kinder. Say that right? Yes. All right. And who is an occupational therapist with the Willoughby Eastside Schools, where she provides services in low incidence classrooms, primarily to students on the autism spectrum. She is a graduate of Cleveland State University, and she has worked with children with special needs for over 25 years. She has presented on sensory and behavioral needs, fine motor skills, and handwriting. She has great interest in collaboration and cons consultations, particularly helping to empower all members of educational teams to use effective strategies with students. So let's have a warm welcome for both of our presenters. And then we got lots of stuff, so I'm going to let them get started. Thanks, okay. Liz. It was all good, right? It, it was absolutely fine. <laughs> um, we have a lot of pieces and parts here, so we're kind of going to be bouncing around between some different visual things and some things mm -hmm. up here. Um, this is kind of what we had planned, is we're going to kind of briefly give you an overview of what the iPads, iPods look like, some of the different accessories, um, how the iTunes process works, and then how you can load apps, things like that. So you have a kind of working knowledge. If you get one, you won't be totally confused. You'll be able to kind of pick it up and, and get started. And then we'll go into more specific apps. So if you're just looking at the iPad and to familiarize yourself with it, and for my short video guy, I'm going to be all over the place. But um, there's really no top and no bottom to an iPad because there's a little gyroscope in it. So um, whatever way you turn, <coughs> whatever way you turn, it adjusts to that. Now watch it. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> I can show it on here. Okay. You show it how it. Yeah. Sure, it adjusts, no matter what way you turn it. Anyway, there isn't a top or a bottom, so when we refer to the bottom, we're talking about this little home button, which is the circular button with the white square drawn in it. So the home button is there, the charge port is right below it, so that's where you're going to be plugging it in to either the wall adapter or to your um, computer. And Liz is going to hold up the little... Um, adapter. This comes with every um, iPad. It's a little portable adapter. It has a USB at one end and the charge port at the other end. I have to say too, it was very strange because we opened up the iPad and this was it. I mean, that's you it. get that's all you get. You get this and you get that and you get this tiny little booklet and mm -hmm. with your it. Apple sticker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't be alarmed. Apple sticker. <laughs> so there isn't. If that's all you got, that's really what all you're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the little cord and the, um, the prongs fold out, folds back in. Um, and it's my understanding from someone who knows more about iPads than myself that if you don't have a Mac, correct me if I'm wrong, the iPad will not charge when plugged into the computer. You have to plug it into a wall outlet. But if you do have a Mac and you charge it in and you plug it into your um, Com your Mac computer to sync it, it will charge fully through that. It will charge through a laptop? A standard see? laptop? See, it, I thought it did on mine too, and the guy's mine like, does. no, 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 it yeah. doesn't. Mine well, does. The iPod for sure does. It's, I think it's a lot faster um, that way, and it's even, it's even better if you plug it into the wall, but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's, no, what, anyway. that's what he said. I guess the jury is out on whether that's right or not. No. Um, the speaker is at the bottom, on, on the right-hand side bottom if you're looking at this as the bottom. So, you know, if you have it in your abdomen and, and you can't hear what it's saying, it's probably because you're muffling it with your abdomen. Um, and then on the right hand side, if this is the bottom, um, the volume toggle is there, is located there. So, you know, push up and the volume um, goes up. And when you do that, you can kind of see that happening. <coughs> You can kind of see the little indicator. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then right above that little toggle is the mute button, and watch what happens when I do that. See? Okay? And then at the very top on the right is the on-off button, a little bit different than the home button. And then the microphone is to the left of that, and you can see um, the headphone jack is um, to the far right, my right. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Then protecting the iPad, we have a couple different click cases we recommend for um, students that may be a little more rough <laughs> this with their devices. This was the best one we, um, what we found so far. And again, things are always coming out and changing, so what we say today may not be true in two or three weeks. But this is the Defender case series. They also have it for the iPod, um, but it has kind of a hard... Um, case that fits around it and then it has a rubberized case that kind of goes over it. The other thing I like about it is it's inset a little bit so the screen, you know, if it drops it's not going to hit directly on the screen. Uh, it does come with a clear uh, like plastic protector that you could put on it. A screen protector. Screen protector. We chose not to put that on. Um, Even a handy dandy little applicator to put the screen protector on. Yeah. But I don't know if you've ever tried to put a screen protector on a smartphone or another device like that, but it's very hard to get them on evenly. And it doesn't really provide straight. that much more protection. Right. Uh, and then the, in addition to um, how nice the Defender case is made, it comes with this little lid. This is by Otterbox, O-T-T-E-R-B-O-X. Um, it comes with this little lid, which is really nice. And it also turns into this handy dandy little um, incline that you can set it on. You just kind of open this and push it together. Sure. There. And then it uh, puts um, your device on a slant, which is kind of nice. You can put it either way. It's got little rubberized feet that, that work well. Two questions. We don't have anything. I've Folks that really, we don't have anything that really would encase the eye. It fully, if you put the little screen protector on, it would nearly, would it? you know, I wouldn't immerse it ever, obviously, but I think it we would have, protect. We have quite a bit of saliva that gets spread around. I mean, it's. And how much does the um, defense. The defender, defender case. case? It was 89 when we bought it, but if you again look on Amazon or things like that, you can get them. I've seen it for like 69 now at okay. Amazon. And then um, in the back of it, it's, it, what's really nice about this case is it's got this little slide on, slide off that allows you to access the charging port really easily without taking it entirely out of the case. So it still maintains its protection, but you can plug it in really easily. And when we're also talking about cases and things like that, if you're looking for even like mounts um, for iPads, things like that, different types of more um, even table mounts, wheelchair mounts, RJ Cooper, that he is now doing more and more of that too, so he'd be another resource, um, it, you know, if you want to look into to cases and mounting too. Um, we talked about the protective cover with the glass screen. Um, it's nice to have some kind of a screen cleaner. Um, these take that these are, get so smudged so easily, especially with the students that we're working with. Um, so it's nice to have something like this, the OtterBox Defender case. <laughs> I just got caught to my sweater. Comes with this this little one, you know, any kind of glasses cleaner or anything like that works really well. Um, there's also some commercially made um, cleaner called iClear. I think that you know if you go to an Apple products place, they have that that kind of stuff, and that kind of cleans it really nicely too. So. So you can use glasses cleaner, eyeglasses. I don't know if I would use eye glass clean. I was referring to the soft cloth. Oh, the cloth. Good okay. for now our glasses. tech people used Windex on it, yeah, which our about tech guy used Windex. freaked me out. Oh. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, and it survived. It is supposed to be like some kind of really hot, hard, durable, he would know. Maybe you guys take the slide off of your iPod. It takes the, the smoothness of the movie. Oh, really? I would really like that. Mm -hmm. would not even yeah. use it. He only did it once. Yes. Just an FYI, Walmart sells those. The uh, eye clear stuff? Yep. Does Do they? Yeah. they? For $2.99. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Okay, so we already talked a little bit about charging. Even though many people say this isn't um, true anymore about um, battery life, uh, a person that we heard present about iPads suggests that you run the battery all the way down and then charge it all the way up the first couple of times you use your iPad. I don't know if that's an, almost an old wives' tale anymore in, in the world of technology, but someone who knows more about iPads than we do suggested that. So we thought we'd throw that in there for you. And the other thing is the battery life on these are wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, in comparison to a, you know, a laptop or something, it's, it doesn't compare. So some of this we've kind of yeah. About so everyone familiar with turning it on, you can either press that home button at the bottom, or you can press the on and off button at the top. So either down here or up here, and then to turn it off, you can either press this button up at, up at the top, or you can put it on sleep mode, which is just pushing and holding this button at the top, and then a little um, slide toggle comes on that says sleep, and you just toggle it, and it totally. Puts it to sleep. And then some troubleshooting if it's not responding. It's just like, in this way, it's just like a computer. You can do a hard shutdown, which is just um, holding the top button down all the way, which is kind of like they're putting it to sleep. Or you can do a reset, which is holding that top on enough button and then holding the home button at the same time. And then another cool thing that you can do, if it's running slow, I'm going to switch to our little camera. And I had my iPod for about a year before I figured this out, so this was something that would be really tells you. Okay, so you double click on the home button. And it, what it lifts up is it lifts up the dock, which we um, haven't referred to yet, but we will. And it shows you all the apps that are currently open. Now, I'm going to kind of because there's really no way to close it. I mean, you just move from one app to another. When, but this is how many things I have open. So if my, if my iPad is running slow, it might be that I have like a bajillion things open. So what you do is you want to press and hold on one of the apps until it wiggles. See how they're wiggling? Mm -hmm. And then you just touch the minus and it closes the app. Okay? And you can, I can do that forever. And then you just touch the home button again, and that makes them stop wiggling. And then some more screen basics. Let me switch back to PC. Um, at the top of the screen, at the top of the screen to um, the, this side, it'll show the, um, how many Wi-Fi bars that you have, so you can see how much your wireless interconnectivity is. is. Um, the time is in the center of the iPad, whether you have Bluetooth um, set up or not. And there are some devices that work via Bluetooth with the iPads, like the wireless keyboard that we brought. So if you have your device set up um, to be interconnected with Bluetooth, it'll be indicated with that little symbol. Your battery capacity is also listed along that top bar. And then the dock is this thing at the bottom, um, right here where my finger is pointing, and, and you'll notice that the six items, which is the max you can put on your dock, remain stable even though I scroll to the left and right with my screen. So what you'd want to put there, and you can put anything you want there, the things that you use with the most frequency. Um, you would want to put something that you want always available to you or to the student you're using the device with. Um, is, uh, one of them is a timer. There are timers available. And there are also a lot of free timers, free app timers that are, the JT's timer is the one that we have on most of our devices. But they're really nice because you can set a timer for four minutes and it runs simultaneously while other apps are going. So if a child is you know, using as a reinforcement some little activity app. The timer is running three minutes, and then it goes ding, 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 your time is up, and then they know that the iPad is, iPad is done. Um, there's also a calendar um, that is very, very handy to use, and that comes um, built in. Um, there's a voice memo that um, is built right in. Um, there's a note, a notepad, it's just, you know, like a pad of paper. And um, then you can, with 
has video capabilities. Yes, it has video capabilities. Do the iPad 2 has the video capabilities yes. built in. Do you want to show your video? Um, so, so here's a student um, showing some strategies for getting calm. <laughs> so he's pushing his hands. So you can put your own videos mm -hmm. on here. We have clear. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. I'm not even agree with that. So now he's pushing his head. So anyway, this is just the whole calming sequence. So you can put your own videos on here. And the cool thing about using the iPad is in, 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 in contrast to a computer is um, that it's, it's like having, it's immediately it's instant, there. Yeah. It's instant. You turn it on and it's there. Okay, and then there are some built-in accessibility features. Um, and where you find those is if you go to um, settings, And then um, you go to settings and then scroll all the way down to accessibility. There's some actual um, things that are just set up standard in an iPad. You can um, have it do voiceover, so it basically reads everything. Um, it can zoom. So I'm just going to show you zoom real quick. Then also you can enlarge text only in like um, email and things like that. Um, was, not in everything. I was gonna say if you turn the voiceover on, be aware it will read everything. Yeah. <laughs> so so while you're trying to get it off, yes. you hear. You toggle, toggle voiceover. Toggle. <laughs> so I'm not doing it for you. You can also change it from um, black on white to white on black for contrast with people that are visually impaired. You can make it mono audio where it takes the left and right out of an earbud and puts it all in one earbud or all in the other. Um, and then you can also do the speak auto text. And you can also set it up so um, a triple touch to that home button <coughs> will toggle your accessibility feature on and off, the one that you use a lot. Okay? Um, so we, we were actually talking a little bit about this earlier with the app basics. This is just about the organization of it. And I think everybody's figured out, you know, you can slide, you can swipe left or right. Um, the folders, this is what, this is what we need to figure out, as we were talking about earlier. When you, to make folders, like Patty, right? <coughs> folders, this is how we're going to make folders. Thank you. Sure. Oh, it's so fun. I was putting big print. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was my biggest. Um, and you can see... Leslie already has some folders on hers, but what you want to do is you're going to press and hold, and you see how they start to squiggle again. Now, if you click the X, it will it will ask you if you want to delete the app. So that's how you get rid of apps. Maybe you download some free things, and you're like, yeah, I, you know, don't really want that. You can delete apps that way. Um, the other thing you can do is this is how you move around. You touch and you just drag around. And you can rearrange where things go. So that's how you can put something down on the dock. Which I just did. And then I accidentally mm -hmm. just put Model Me Kids in um, writing. But so she has these folders set up. So what you would do is you drag, and you could say I want to put going places with, I don't know, Talking Tom for some reason. I would roll, scroll over it and then let it go, and it makes a folder. And, and then I allows could you name that uh, folder. Oh, cool. And so that's so it's literally just putting two on top of each other, right. and then it allows you to name it. And then you can just drag and drop into those folders too. Um, and then to make it stop, you just click yeah, right, sure. click the home again. Fun. Doesn't help out. Yeah. It helps you organize. I, I went from like five screens down to two. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> my little all my casinos can go. But yeah, all your games. You can have a game. Yes. Um, yeah. Go ahead. It's really to lock that feature. I have folks that could just have it. Yeah. And that's why we when we use this, we sit right next to our students. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is we back it up. So if it does get deleted, you need to then go back to your iTunes, you know, that's saved on your computer and, mm -hmm. and reinstall. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, if there is, I certainly haven't found it, and I don't know where. What was the question? Sorry. If it locks, if there's a way to lock that feature out. Oh. Who knows? Maybe who I've knows? lost an app. But one nice thing is, if you've already purchased it, when you plug your device back in um, and go through yeah. iTunes, it'll say you've already purchased this. Do you want to re-download it, and then it will allow you to do that. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah, it remembers you. That's good. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> it knows what you like. <laughs> And then there's two ways to add apps. One is just to do it wirelessly. So if we were, you know, anybody who had an iPad here today could get on um, the App Store, which is kind of go through here and pick. There's, you can see there's a ton of free. So you can just go ahead and do it that way. You can um, search by category. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. And the other thing is you can do searches. You know, you can type in, if you're looking for a specific thing, you can type in search and then type in that word and then it'll, it'll generate all the apps um, that way too. Okay, so you can do it that way or you can go through iTunes um, on your computer and you can search it that way, download the computer and then put it on to your device that way also. So Proloquo, I'm not sure, is everybody familiar with Proloquo? No. No, okay. Proloquo is kind of the... It was kind of like the first communication app that I think generated the most buzz. So, you know, you have communication devices that cost lots and lots of money, you know, and then you have an iPad, an iPod that comes out with a communication app for $190. Um, and I mean, I, I've done a lot of assistive technology, and I'm not saying this is perfect for everybody, but it does have its place. Um, it is, it has a lot of symbols, I mean, it's 7,000 items. It uses the symbol sticks, which a lot of our students use because we use to you, um, if you're familiar with that. So it's very similar, which is nice. I like that about it. It's not as fully programmable as communication devices. So, you know, there are some, some pros and cons to it. Um, and from a fine motor standpoint, yeah. if the child has a hard time with that scanning across, you know, some of the pages, to get all of the icons that are available on that page, you have to scroll all the way down the page. And you know, there's some students that we have that you know don't have that much, much object permanence or fine motor ability to do that. So. And that is, that is an issue with a couple of our students because you have to have there's a very differentiated touch between a, touching to activate it and touching to swipe. So it's um yeah, but it has. I mean, there are tons and tons. And feel free, you know, to come up and look at these. But there are tons and tons of vocabulary in here. Um, you know, it, it will do. It'll speak words. It'll speak sentences. You can combine. It has, you know, kind of that. Thank you. That message bar up at the top. Um, you know, editing it, it. Editing it is not bad. It's just. It's similar, I think, to, to many other ones. Um, so, there's definitely some pros and cons. The other thing I want to tell you is there is now um, a company that's doing uh, key guards. For Proloquo on the iPad, so that was something I just kind of saw recently. Um, so it's just another. But again, you're limited. You can't swipe for your key guards on. So there's a lot of things kind of to think about. Um, you can personalize it though with photos and things like mm -hmm. that, which is nice. Um, and of course, the iPad 2 has a camera and a video camera in it. The, these that we have here are the ones, and they don't. But there is. I should probably mention oh, yeah. this real quick. This iPad camera connection kit which is kind of nice. I don't know if you've seen this. It's, it's like 49 or $50, but all you do is take your digital camera um, cord, um, plus it gives you two little adapters depending on which kind of um, digital camera cord you have, and then you can just um, load anything from your digital camera into the iPad. It stays nice. it right in iPhoto, and then you can just use those in any of the apps that you have on your device. Nice. So it's kind of handy. It's it's kind of the easiest way. I mean, you could e email them to yourself too, which we've done. Or you can do them through iTunes. You know, yeah. Through that, but you know, we don't always have. I mean, working where we do, we don't always have computers with our iTunes you know, set up there. So it's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, our biggest issue is we don't have a wireless connection in right. districts. So if I want a picture that I just took with the child and I want to put it into a story app, then this is really quick for me. I just take it right off my digital camera and put it in, and it's there. I saw a couple of questions. Um, the bottom is very, very soft on this. Could you use the external um, amplifiers? If I was in a classroom, it would it would probably be okay. Um, I mean, you could turn it up a little bit. But I'm not in a classroom in a really noisy environment. Right, and so 
RJ Cooper has, like he has some, you, you can buy different things. Um, RJ Cooper has one where you know it's just a speaker that super velcros to the back of the device. So there are some things out there. There's nothing that we found that has like a Defender case with a built-in speaker for an iPad. Now for the iPod, um, I have this and my iPod just fits because you know we go to the restaurants and things like that and nobody could hear anything. So it just fits in here like this and it has a built-in speaker. This is the iMango case and all that information will be in the Dropbox too if you want that. But um, I could plug it in here. You could see. It's really nice. It's a very nice speaker. You could hear it very clearly in a community setting with, without issue. The only thing neither Liz or I like about um, one aspect of the iMango is that the screen that covers it mm -hmm. gets even more fingerprinted up than yeah, the screen not. of your iPad or mm -hmm. iPod or your iPhone. Mm -hmm. You know, so it gets really smudgy real quick and it actually creates kind of like a visual distraction for the students because it adds this extra glare that kind of visually. Yeah, I don't like that. And the other thing is you can't turn, you can't easily turn off um, the batteries. 